Hello, everyone. For this module, I will be sharing with you one of the important core coaching skills, and this is giving effective feedback. Ito po yung isang skill na napaka-critical in our dialogue with our coachee. Because as Filipinos, it is not something that we're very comfortable doing. Ang mga Pinoy po pag binibigyan ng feedback, lalo na pag positive, minsan nahihiya pa tayo. Pag sinasabing, alam mo, ang galing-galing mo, tuwang-tuwa ako nung nagawa mo to, ang usual na reply natin, hindi naman. At nahihiya tayong tanggapin yung compliment na yon. Kabalik pa rin naman, pag binibigyan tayo ng negative feedback, we're not very well accepting of those constructive criticism. Kung minsan nga po, nagiging balat si buyas ang ating attitude. Now, I'd like to share with you this particular quote from Babista Aboy who mentioned that Filipinos really prefer to give and receive indirect negative feedback. They are more comfortable with soft, subtle, and diplomatic tone of criticism. What works for them is that the actual criticism is wrapped around by positive messages. So hindi talaga tayo komportable na dinidiretso pag binibigyan tayo ng feedback. Gusto natin, give it to me gently. At minsan, ang nangyayari, imbis na makuha natin yung mensahe ng diretso, nasusugarcoat ito ng mga salitang minsan hindi nakakatulong. Bill Gates mentioned that we all need people who give us feedback. That's how we improve. And I completely agree. The intention is to actually help our coachee improve. Even Ken Blanchard mentioned that feedback is the breakfast of champions. Napakagandang panimula ito as we grow in our daily activities. And Stephen Covey is saying that it takes humility to seek feedback. It takes wisdom to understand it, analyze it, and appropriately act on it. I'll be giving you some tips in terms of giving feedback for our coaching sessions. And one of those tips is for us to be very specific with our feedback. Napaka-importante po ng pagiging specific sa feedback kasi ayaw nating ma-misunderstand tayo ng ating coaching. We want to be able to put our feedback into the right context. For example, these three feedback are not specific. You have a positive attitude. I find you very lazy. That was a good job. We can improve on this feedback by saying, what is it that made you say that I have a positive attitude? Why are you saying I am lazy? And what good job is that? So this could be examples in terms of making our feedback specific. You are always smiling when you deal with people. I noticed that you clock in beyond 8.30 a.m. every Monday. You accomplished all your monthly deliverables and even received a commendation. The second tip is to focus on behavior rather than on the personality. Kasi po, pag nakafocus tayo dun sa personality ng tao, may tendency na baka hindi niya tanggapin ng buo yung ating feedback. Ang tendency at ang normal behavior ng mga taong tinitira yung personality is for them to also defend themselves and argue or reason out why that particular behavior happened. For example, these statements, you're really antisocial. You need to socialize from time to time. Don't be so dense and drop your overly logical perspective. This is the reason why becoming so emotional has no place in our professional work. So kung mapapansin niyo po, these three statements are focused rather on the personality and not the behavior of the person. One way to improve could be these statements. 
I noticed that you skip our team dinners three times already. You have exhibited good points on this argument. Can you also consider other perspectives? You mentioned that you shouted at him in the office because you were constantly bullied. So these three statements are now focused on behavior rather than personality. The third tip is to make our feedback constructive. And in doing so, we really tailor fit our feedback on the coaching. Second, we need to come up with a feedback that is linked to our goal in the university or the organization. And lastly, we need to ensure that there's mutual understanding. We need to check with the coachee na iintindihan mo ba yung binigay kong feedback. Otherwise, if there is no clarity yet, baka we can use other statements in order for our coachee to understand that particular feedback. My next step is for us to speak positively. Alam niyo po, malinaw kung ang language natin ay negatibo versus if it's positive. Kasi pag ang ginagamit nating lingwahe negative, ang lagi nating sinasabi, the things that cannot be done versus the things that can be done. Another clue if it's negative is that there's always that subtle tone of blaming. Pero pag positibo, mas nakafocus talaga tayo sa pwedeng mangyari, ano yung mga alternatives and choices. If it's negative, that particular tone can really sound frustrating. Whereas if it's positive, our coachee can be encouraged. We have to be careful with statements that can threaten the self-esteem of our coachee. Example, I don't think you are able to handle this type of situation. You should know better than to say that. I thought you would have a greater sense of pride in your work. If you would only listen, you would surely understand. You can't be serious about that suggestion, right? This situation takes some skill. I don't think you can handle that. I'm surprised to hear that from a person with your experience. You just do not seem to understand the situation here. Kung mapapansin niyo po itong mga statements na to, napaka-sarcastic. And sarcasm has no place in a good coaching session, even if your point is actually very valid. Because what we want is for our coach to open up to us through this particular dialogue. So, paano tayo makakapagsalita ng mas positibo? Yung mga words that can trigger our emotion, yung mga salitang pwedeng makapagpakulo ng dugo natin, pwede po nating iwasan yan, at siguro mas gagamitin natin yung mga salita that can calm the person. I'll give you some examples. If you hear the words, It's our policy. Nako, tapos na po ang usapan pag ganyan. Kasi sinasabi mo, dapat pamilyar ka sa polisiya. Wala tayong magagawa, kundi sumunod lang sa polisiya. Pero kung sasabihin natin, this is what we can do, or here's what we can do, we're still basing it on the policy, but it's now moving forward. Another emotional trigger is, I don't know, hindi ko alam. We can rather say, I will find out. You should have. Dapat kasi ito yung ginawa. Pwede naman nating sabihin, yung iba, ito po yung nagawa. What others found helpful would be the following. Another emotional trigger would be, the only thing we can do. Ang tanging magagawa natin. Rather, we can say, probably the best option would be. Napaka-komplikado kasi niyan. It's complicated. We can say, I will tackle it from here. I'll give you some statements and I'd like us to assess which tone is better. For example, this statement, don't forget to sign all three pages of the HR contract. So pag sinabing kasi natin, huwag mong kakalimutang pirmahan, 
there's already that assumption. Nakakalimutan mo. Rather, we could say, remember to sign all three pages of the HR contract. We cannot deliver your requested document until you send full details. Probably we can say, we will process your requested document as soon as you send us full details. You neglected to include your wet signature in the sal and form. Maybe we can say, please use wet signature to sign the sal and form. Di po ba? There's always a better way in terms of saying our statement using a positive tonality. We need to avoid using second person if possible when stating negative ideas. At paano po natin ito maiiwasan? Kung unpleasant po yung idea na sasabihin natin, mas gusto natin na third person yung reference natin. So for example, this statement, your service update report contains numerous mistakes. We just want to point out on that particular report that contains numerous mistakes, huwag na po natin isama yung tao. Probably we can just say this service update report contains numerous mistakes since you're already talking to that person directly. Pero kung pleasant naman po yung idea, we can use second person. Idikit po natin dun sa coach si sa kausap natin. So for example, this statement, it was a well-substantiated investigation report. Since this is something positive, probably we can just say already, you wrote a well-substantiated investigation report. Another is to use the subjunctive mood. Yung subjunctive mood po ay parang if-when situation. Instead of directly stating the negative news, probably we can still use the if-when situation. So for example, we say, I cannot approve your transfer to our Visayas operation. I will not approve your request for printer replacement. I cannot accept the resource speaker's recommendation. So all of these statements are on the negative side. So using the subjunctive mood, we could probably say, as long as these are true, we can say, if positions are already available in our Visayas operation, I would approve your transfer. I could change the unit as requested if this is already available from the warehouse. I wish I could accept the speaker's recommendation. We always need to understand why we are doing effective feedback. Dapat po yung intention talaga natin nakafocus sa pagtulong sa ating coaching. It's not really about our method in doing effective feedback. In order for our coaching session to be effective, ang iliisip po talaga natin matutulungan kong mag-improve ang aking coaching. Remember that we will never know how long our words will stay in someone's mind, even long after you've forgotten that you actually spoke them. At sana yung mga lasting words na nasasabi natin sa coachee ay yung mga positibong mga salita or yung mga salitang mas makakatulong sa kanila upang mag-improve. Thank you very much for learning effective feedback.